Okay, so hello to all our audience of Mel Zone Radio Show and Oxygen Radio. We are at the Barbuck Mel Fest for the first edition, day two. And we've got the huge pleasure to be with all the members of the band coming from Holland. Rinpad, hello, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Very good too. Can you first introduce yourself to our audience and uh, uh, tell us what you are doing, uh, playing like instruments in the band? I'm uh, Max, I'm the drummer. Okay. Axel, guitars. Yeah, you in France, it would be Jean Gérard and guitars. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, Oliver, which in French would be Olivier, and I'm the singer. Okay. I'm Josh Rick, and I play the bass. Okay. <laughs> so, thanks for taking some time to answer some questions for Oxygen Radio. Uh, to begin with the unav unavoidable, not easy to say question, can you do a brief, I said a brief, history of the, of the genesis of the band Rinpad? Yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's skip a whole, a whole piece of history, which we all like to call uh, Grinpata 1.0. <laughs> it was started in uh, 2006, six, six, seven, yeah. six, six, as more of a death grind band. Okay. And then... Uh, it was like a funny project, right? Something yeah. like that. Born, yeah. The inevitable members left, uh, this one left, and then he came. And, uh, 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 so. and um, it was around... 2010 when we won a medal battle in, in Holland <coughs> and we were like okay you know, this opens doors and around that time three out of five members left so we were like and everybody was like uh, okay yeah we heard Gerinpat is uh, dead and gone and oh sorry guys that you quit it and Axel and I were like um, but no that's up to us I mean <laughs> we decide whether we quit or not yeah. and so we yeah. were like okay what are we going to do? Make trash. And then... Uh, yeah, that was really our here? thing, actually. Yeah, yeah was, he, he sent me a text. Around, around that time, I... Uh, <laughs> it was actually funny. Uh, we were introduced by a common friend. And she told me, like, I think Grinpot is looking for a new singer. And I was without a band for a while. And I actually had my roots in death metal. And I got in contact with these guys. And... Uh, well, he got in the practice room, it was really cool, the vibe was good, and then I remember that Yeige was actually warning me, and I was like, but I have to say one thing, we are, uh, we are completely done with death metal, we actually want to play thrash metal, we so I, yeah, yeah, so I, I hope that's okay, I, I hope you find that interesting as well, and I was like, fuck yeah, I was actually looking for a thrash band, so that worked out great, okay. and yeah, from there on, it's, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. so fast forward. 2016. Who met Rick? 2019? In Gouda. 19 already. Okay. Okay. And then Paul left and we were lucky enough to find Max on short yeah. notice. Yeah. So we're whole again with a new yeah. EP coming up. Uh, now and yeah. that's it. Okay. Pretty that's much, good. right? Yeah. 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 I guess it's, it's a, a good one, right? Yeah, yeah we did release really some couple of cool things back in there, but we'll probably we talk about that some. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No problem. Cool. So let's talk about now your first album, uh, Violence, uh, was released in March 2020 at the beginning of the COVID period. Uh, not easy to defend an album during a, a period of total lockdown, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, we were like, yeah, it's coming out. And we, we brought it out like 20th of March was the official release date. And everything went locked, I think, exactly by that week or one week before, I think. Or, and uh, yeah, now... Okay, all shows cancelled, whatever, and it was a bit like, well, I mean, it was a hard period for everybody, so... Yeah. Impossible to defend the album live, of course, yeah, because was everything was locked down. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the whole lockdown started more or less around about the release date. It was... Uh, we were not involved in any way, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. so did you have new songs ready for the second album, and uh, when can we expect its release? Well, what I can say, I mean, if you take a look at it, um, <clears throat> we, we have released several EPs, actually. Right. And then, okay, we had enough material then at some point for, for the full-length album. And now we are releasing, say, this month, a, a new EP. Okay. So actually, the EP format kind of works for us. Also, in a sense, we like, I don't know, we're not that we, we really like lots of songs mm -hmm. ta -ta -ta -ta, right after each other, but it's more like we have one and we... We take our time, say, in order to do it, but not also that, because we, we really write like as listeners, mm -hmm. 
more than really, uh, oh yeah, this is nice to play, and then we play it. No, really listener. So then we take a lot of care about the arrangement so that the song remains a song. Okay. And then the EP format is a bit nicer because of that, then you can release it a bit more often. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, if you, even if you have many, many songs, sometimes it's like, you get many songs lost, actually, we believe, if you really release a very lo uh, a long play, etc. So then, in order to nowadays keep up the attention, the EP format maybe fits us, uh, yeah, we think better. it's a bit yeah. better, yeah. Right? Yeah. right? I mean... Yeah, and it's also, that's my opinion at least, it's, it's, with, with an EP it's, it's easier to say form some sort of cohesion. You know, I mean, if if yeah, if 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 you definitely. if you release a full length, and you just have to have like ten or eleven songs, and I don't know, you know, for me personally, if whenever I listen to an album, I'm 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 almost never like, oh man, I like number nine yeah. so much. I mean, you're always, yeah. you know, it's at a certain point, of course, left on some classics, classics besides. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just yeah. for alls and blah blah blah, blah but. Usually I'm a bit like that, so you know, just keep it short and powerful. And also, I think it's like a short burst of explosion that you can release more often instead of like waiting for five years for a new album. Then you can go like, no, we have this like short burst of explosion we can release, and you can release more often, capture the attention of our fans. And I think we all believe that that's the best way for us to go right now. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> I, I'm not drinking. Um, can I ask why you are so fascinating about sharks, especially the great white ones? Is it something uh, that come like that, or tell us more about that? They're the coolest creatures in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sharks are metal, <laughs> yeah, so trash. Yeah. yeah, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the truth is, you know what? It just happened. Yeah, it's uh, we wrote Shark Bite the song, mm -hmm. with no intention at all of making it a thing, yeah. and then uh, that EP came out. So of course the EP had had to have a title. So well, Shark Bite, and so then the video clip became Shark, and then shirts, mm -hmm. and then uh, the, the 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 idea of the inflatable sharks came, and it sort of <laughs> went downhill yeah, from it there. Grew up on its own. <laughs> and, say, know, it's, uh, yeah. and, and people like know, on on Facebook and stuff, it just. I mean, people start sending us pictures and memes and stuff, and th the word shark dress or shark pit was, is, was you know, into, and we're like, okay, so now we're <laughs> sort yeah. of the shark band, and it's, it's fun, and we embrace it. Yeah, I don't we, get, we, we sort we of started fun. owning it, say, it's, and, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that's the honest truth, it, it just happened. Yeah, yeah we, okay. we, we rolled with it massively. I think, uh, I remember the fr when we did the release show for Shark Bite, and I don't remember who exactly thought it was a good idea to get the blow-up sharks and throw them in the audience. We thought like, yeah, for the release show of Shark Bite, it would be a good thing. And then we saw the audience going absolutely crazy with it. Yeah. It was like, yeah. I, I, I re yeah, I remember after the show, we were looking at each other, it's like, yeah, we're going to do that every yeah. show from now on. <laughs> like that was so, that was yeah. so insanely cool. And we see people like trying to ride sharks on top of the crowd, you know, crowd surfing on top of sharks and trying to <laughs> stage dive with sharks and stuff. And it was so Some massively humping. awesome. <laughs> a lot of shark humping in the yeah. audience. Yeah. <laughs> so when we all saw that, people loved it so much. It was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to be the shark band from now on. Okay, so you become your mascot just like that because of the... Of, yeah. Of the yeah. 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 yeah, right. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so it's the mascot, it's and the mascot. and it it, it defines us now. Yeah, 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 yeah really, yeah. really defines us. Okay, you, okay. Uh, your your music style is, is thrash metal. Uh, uh, what? Which are your main influences? Your favorite art, artist, bands, etc. Completely not thrash. It's uh, in the power metal. Uh, it's in the the mainstream metal that people call it, uh, Iron Maiden, the Metallica. Um, and I only play what I like. So when they come up with a riff and it's trash, then it's trash. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Exodus, Pantera, Slayer, Metallica, what else can you say? I mean, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and yeah. I, and if you start digging here, but yeah, yeah I would say that, that's yeah, it. I mean, that's, that's what tickles my pickle, you know. <laughs> I think the same. The same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anthrax uh, for me yeah. also. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for me it's actually a bit, a little bit the other way around. Started out as a real like black metal, death metal fan. I couldn't be like fast and and like hardcore enough, and then. 
I actually discovered how cool Thrash was later on, and I really wanted to be in a Thrash band, found these guys, and I think I discovered so much more music through these guys yeah. that it's amazing, and we went to a lot of concerts okay. together, and especially, we also have a bit of a hardcore vibe to the music, and I really warmed up to that thanks to this guy over here, so, okay. yeah, no, but you, that's a fun thing about being in a band, you influenced each other so much with yeah. the music, and I think that actually really happened with us as well. Yeah, well, g uh, growing up in the 80s, uh, getting in touch with metal, it, of course, it was trashy and it was uh, flourishing right now. And uh, of course, yeah, the, uh, the big bands uh, like Slayer, Exodus, Metallica, but also from the, the West Coast, uh, the Anthrax, uh, SOD, MOD, not to forget. I love them. Great. Good taste, good taste, I like it too. Uh, do you believe that Bandcamp and other digital platforms help the new thrash or metal in general bands? Which do you think is the ideal way for a band to, to promote nowadays its work? Well, it's, yeah, well, it's ideal. It's ideal to, to do it on Spotify, to, to put it everywhere where you can. But my honest opinion is uh, because of all those platforms, the live music really dies. Uh, people are fine just by listening it at home, mm. um, but going to a concert is too much effort. Yeah. Not with all, of, not, not with all at all. But there are people who are thinking that way, and yeah, I think people should experience more live music, especially uh, if I like how I look at bands. Uh, there are a lot of bands I don't listen beforehand. I just want to see them live, and then they they just capture me, and it's it's amazing. And then then at that point, I'm just listening at home all the time. Yeah, I must. I, I would to add also a bit the thing of the EP or a full album. You will dedicate lots of time to make it, as you said, like cohesive all the songs, like or how it flows the whole album. But then this platform sort of makes it like, okay, defeat the purpose of an album because you have like hits and yeah. that's it or something yeah. like that, that or singles, if you could say it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that no. is the, the downside, but. Yeah, um, no, you no I, I think uh, definitely it's a, it's a mixed bag because on one side you get to put your free, uh, music into uh, in front of so many people that in unless you had a major label in the 80s or 90s you would never be able to do that so I think that's really cool yeah, yeah. but on the other side we can see that with our uh, like if you go through the statistics over Spotify people listen like one two songs of the album and we put a lot of effort in making it like one two to the end like the first to the end songs like making it one big like um, like a co cohesive uh, thing and then people don't really seem to care about that and I think that's the downside of it. Like everybody gets to put their music out there, so it's really hard to uh, to be noticed. So yeah, it's a mixed bag. It's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, yeah. there is a positive side and negative side of. Things, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Looking back at your childhood, uh, in which musical environment did you grow up? Where your parents play music? What oh. is their music at home? Tell us. Tell us more. <laughs> I remember that my parents played in a band together, a cover band. Okay. My mother was in love with uh, country, uh, the, especially Melissa Edwards at that moment. Mm -hmm. But my father has always been the, the, the old school hard work guy, uh, Deep Purple, uh, Black Sabbath, I, Iron Maiden. And uh, from there on, I just had to discover myself. And then later on, I heard when I was really into death metal, mm -hmm. she said, well, I can remember I was a child. I went, I went to Sepultura and, uh, and I went to Cannibal Corpse. And like, wow, I didn't know that. But that was at 20 years after. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for me, oof, uh, yeah, I know in the house is quite mixed. I, but I am from Chile. So when I grew up there, actually my parents, I was born by, say, when uh, the whole mm -hmm. the military government was there. So then, and also before that, uh, the, with, the, with, the, with the communist regime, which was before also, it was super hard to get the bands, whatever. So the, my father used to have like uh, different stuff, exchanging LPs, whatever. And then he got from everything from the 70s, say uh, like uh, really, uh, but, but the, lots of the stuff like uh, he had the rolling. So from the, yeah, uh, the Elvis, uh, I remember he had the first album of Black Sabbath after I rediscovered it, say, okay. and it was super cool because you played it, but yeah. my mother had left it under the sun, so it, was, it had really like a more psychedelic vibe to it, this, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, since then, and then, uh, yeah, my father was kind of like in the 
soft uh, rock anyway, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and my mother was all about uh, Spanish singers, like okay. Victor Manuel, Joan Manuel Serrat or something like that. So yeah, uh, that's a bit my yeah. background as really, okay. really a kid. So yeah. okay. I discovered metal in my own, uh, say. <laughs> okay. I was sort of born into music as well. My, my mom is a professional musician. Okay. Even now, well, she's way past, uh, uh, say, uh, retirement age, but she's still working like crazy. <laughs> she, and, uh, so uh, yeah, I, I had my first LP when I was three. three. I could not explain to my parents which, which <laughs> LP I meant, but my aunt knew. She said, yeah, he means uh, uh, Cheap Trick, live at Budokan. Oh, and, uh, yeah. and, and I was, and so <laughs> I think that's quite young to have your first double LP when you are three. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I think I think my story is quite uh, standard. You know, when when I was like 14, I discovered Guns N' Roses. That you know, it was uh, 86 or whatever, and it's, uh, it's Paradise City. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then you discover Metallica, and then and, and then Pent and then the 90s Pantera, Sepultura, I and mean, yeah, it's, okay. no. Cool. And uh, besides metal, I listened to a lot of music. Uh, I mean, every, for, for, you know, I was, for, of course, it, at home it was always classic, classic, classic. My father listened to Frank Sinatra, Abba, The Stones, The Beatles, you know, yeah. everything. Everything, yeah, uh, very open, very wide. I also actually grew up in a family with a lot of music, so my father played a lot of music in uh, jazz and Dixieland style, <laughs> playing banjo and uh, guitar. So, yeah, there was always music in the house. My mom was a really big fan of... Uh, Spanish and uh, French singers, actually, so the, um, the chansons. Yeah. So there was a lot of that in the house, and uh, no metal, no rock, nothing like that. Okay. So I was actually uh, listening, I think I got into hardcore hip-hop at first, like not the R&B kind of shite, but more like their hardcore stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I was at a friend's place, and uh, that's when I first heard the uh, Tales of the Thousand Lakes from Amorphis, and I was like, holy shit, never knew this existence existed. And that was like, completely changed my life, that experience, yeah. because yeah, that, yeah, that was like, l lit my love for metal right there. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, my father, he was, I uh, have really old parents, so my father was growing up in uh, the 1930s, 40s, so okay. back then, that music, that uh, thrived him, so it's like more like the, the old uh, uh, blues music from the U USA coming, yeah. everything, and my mother, she was more like uh, Pavarotti. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, Carreras, yeah. something like that, so, so actually, I did not take anything from that, and uh, yeah, I grew up myself, and uh, it was actually more the 80s uh, pop uh, stuff yeah. in the beginning. I like Duran Duran, mm. you had Frankie Goes to Hollywood, oh, yeah. very cool, and also Queen, I loved it. Yeah. Queen. And from there on, yeah, I just moved on to the, the harder stuff. <laughs> I started with the Guns N' Roses, uh, Fate No More, Motley yeah. Crue, Skid Row. Skid Row. Yeah, and then, yeah. And, then, and then it came Metallica. The Godfathers, <laughs> or not, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so uh, what are the future plans for the bands? You are playing in a few hours at the, at the Barbeck Metal Festival. Did you have other shows planned uh, or, or festival? What is the future for the band? Releasing the EP, yeah. uh, playing a lot of shows in the Netherlands. Okay. Uh, and uh, wait what next year has for us. Um, one thing I can say, the EP is going to blow people's minds, yeah. okay. and we're going to play one song tonight, so... Two? Two? two. Yes. Oh, yes. We're going to play two. We're going to play two. <laughs> <laughs> so two. Yeah. yeah. So two, not one, two. Yeah, for, so for the Dutchies uh, uh, looking or listening to this, like September 30th is going to be the release party for the EP. Yeah. Yeah, in our hometown of Utrecht. So yeah, we're really looking forward. There's still some tickets available, so get your tickets if you're uh, if you're interested in coming. Then also we got some. Um, yeah, we I think we got some uh, some things going on that we can't really say just yet, but there's going to be some awesome stuff happening. So, and if you want to get in, to your country, get in touch with us and uh, let, you know, just, uh, let's thrash that place up. Okay, and you are going to play tomorrow too at Inot. We we at the Aka Shelter with uh, with with the. With Deadwood, yeah, with yeah. Deadwood, yeah, okay, they, they tell us to us, okay. So, uh, sorry, I want to thank you very much for this interview. This was Grinpad from Holland. Green, 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 Green. 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 Green.
Yes, Pat. Yes, 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 yes. Got it. I got it. We wish you a lot of good things, of course, for the Thank band, you. for the future, for you, for your family. Take care of you. Don't forget to love, but I'm sure you, you love every day. That's cool. And uh, have a good show for tonight. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.